Well, good morning, Lake Grove family. Uh, our 365 Bible story reading for today is number 343, The African Official. You can find that in your Bibles in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. And if you've not had a chance to read that story yet today, let's take a moment to do so right now. Well, welcome back. You know, you gotta love our Bible story reading for today. So God sends Philip, the evangelist, way out into the middle of nowhere to meet up with uh, the African eunuch while he's reading from a scroll of Isaiah while returning from a visit to the Jerusalem temple. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it seems like a one in a million chance encounter to me, doesn't it to you? And yet, it's not merely coincidence that Philip and the African eunuch meet. An angel of the Lord, a messenger sent from God, tells Philip to get up and go to an isolated spot where uh, he will encounter the African eunuch. And so Philip uh, got up and went to the designated area. Now I suppose, like Jonah, he could have disobeyed and went the opposite direction. And yet he didn't. He was faithful. Uh, he obeyed. Well, what ensued was a transformational, life-altering conversation for the African eunuch. This eunuch was in charge of the Ethiopian queen's royal treasury, which was a position of great uh, trust and power. Uh, he also, we presume, was a man of some significant means because possessing a scroll of Isaiah in that time, well, it would have been a, an expensive proposition. The African eunuch was probably what we would refer to as a God-fearer, uh, not a proselyte and certainly not circumcised, uh, thus not one who enjoyed full um, membership in the Jewish community, but one who nevertheless worshipped the Jewish God. God-fearers would be granted access into uh, the court of the Gentiles. Uh, but would be denied access into the rest of the temple in Jerusalem. All of this is to say uh, that the African eunuch appears to be a sincere seeker, uh, wanting to know more about the Jewish God. And to this man, God sends Philip. And Philip is invited into conversation by this African eunuch. And so Philip helps the eunuch understand this passage from Isaiah. And then starting from Isaiah, Philip very adeptly shares the good news about Jesus. Well, there's water, there's a baptism, and there is new life for the African eunuch. Um, the rest is history, I suppose. But once again, the gospel of Jesus has crossed all boundaries. And the African eunuch went on his way rejoicing over the new life he had discovered in Jesus Christ. Now, the New Testament does not record anything more of his particular story. But according to early church fathers, uh, Irenaeus and Eusebius, the eunuch became a missionary to Ethiopia. Without question, the African eunuch was a changed man, and he had a story to tell. So let's think about it. I mean, what is the message of this delightful story from Acts chapter 8? You know, I have to say, as I reflect upon this story, I am struck by the way our sovereign God is constantly at work behind the scenes, orchestrating what seem to be unlikely chance encounters. Chance encounters that sometimes lead to um, revealing conversations, uh, welcome guidance and encouragement, and sometimes even new life in Jesus Christ. In our passage for today, Philip was willing to go where God sent him, to allow God to use him to change the direction of the African eunuch's life. And so I wonder, who has played the role of Philip in your life? who through what some might deem as chance encounters 
has helped you to see Jesus more clearly. Look back at your life. Look back at all of the chance encounters, the little comments here and there, the people who've come in and out of your life bearing witness to Jesus. Can you see our sovereign God at work through all of it? Our sovereign God at work relentlessly, day after day, drawing you and me deeper and deeper into the reality of his great love for us in Jesus Christ. Perhaps our prayer for today as we reflect on this passage from Acts chapter 8 should simply be something like this. Lord, thank you for all of the people, sometimes through seemingly chance encounters, who have been faithful to your call to share the good news about Jesus with me. And when you call me to go, to get up and go, and share this good news with yet others, may I, like Philip, be found faithful and willing to get up and go. May it be so. Amen.